All right, so uh, hello. Uh, very happy to be here and um, speaking about uh, Jetpack Compose Canvas. Uh, I'm Julian Selvi, and I'm an Android engineer from France, uh, working at Aircall, a uh, company based in Paris, but also uh, in uh, Australia and uh, in the US. Um, so I'm an Android GD uh, since the beginning of the year. I'm part of the organization of the Paris, Paris Android User Group, uh, listening good music and drinking some IPA beer. And you can also find me on Twitter, uh, at Julien Selby. If you want to ping me, I'll be happy to answer any question. So uh, for today, uh, I focus uh, on the Jetpack Compose Canvas, how uh, you can unleash uh, its capabilities. Uh, first, I'll cover the, the first steps with uh, the Jetpack Compose Canvas, uh, having an overview of the APIs and uh, what you can do and what you should uh, take into account before digging into the Canvas. Uh, then I'll go uh, into the, the animations uh, and see how you can animate the shapes you, you draw on your Canvas. And then I'll go uh, a bit further, uh, bringing all your, your knowledge you learned uh, with the canvas, uh, so with uh, the the shape API, and like bringing them to other uh, other composable, and draw things on your like regular composable, like text, image, or some over any other uh, composable. So. Uh, let's see with the first part. So let's see our first step with the Jetpack, Jetpack Compose Canvas. So first, uh, like uh, a little disclaimer here, uh, what you will learn during this session. So you'll learn the foundations of Jetpack Compose Canvas, the, the components uh, here itself. Uh, you will have an overview of the DrawScope API uh, that will allow us to draw some shapes online and some kind of stuff on the canvas. Uh, and then uh, you are you, you first experience with the uh, animations on, on the canvas. And then you learn also how to build and animate custom shapes for your composables. Uh, so I mean by custom shapes is that uh, you can draw an outline on your composables uh, for images, for example, like, like uh, a diamond or something like that. And you'll see how you can do such a things and uh, even uh, add some nice animation to, to, that, to that outline. And after all, all of this, uh, I think you will have the, all the knowledge. I, I hope, <laughs> uh, maybe to unleash all your Canvas talent and maybe bring some uh, very nice UI, uh, like some uh, some other did, for example, for the Jetpack Compose challenges, uh, for the timer here, for example, can draw uh, some some crazy crazy timer uh, that looks like a tomato, or uh, bring new new US style, or even like uh, yes, this is. With the uh, with the Jetpack Compose can with the canvas itself, you can build your own Tetris. Um, I think this this is like super amazing, like to see that uh, in a Jetpack Compose canvas. <laughs> so well, now uh, let's dig into some uh, uh, some real real stuff with the with the canvas. Uh, so why are you going for the canvas first? Uh, maybe you can have some design limitations. For example, uh, you want to draw something that is not very available on other and regular composables. You want to draw some custom shapes and custom outlines uh, that is required, for example, in your mockups. Have a talk with your designer and see uh, how it goes, and you have to draw some very custom shapes for very awesome designs. So maybe you'll need like to learn some some stuff about the shapes. Um, uh, you may be go for the canvas for building graphic experience. Uh, if you want to go for an Instagram or uh, like a circle uh, graph or something like that, uh, maybe it's a good solution uh, for all the graph to go with um, with the canvas. And of course, if you want to have fun, uh, so it's a place where you can unleash all your mathematics knowledge here on the canvas. 
So uh, anything that is drawable, I think uh, you can like put whatever you want on the canvas. Uh, so was it possible to draw on a canvas before Compose? Of course, yes. Uh, with the, the view API, uh, you have a dedicated access uh, to the canvas on each, com on each view component. Uh, but yeah, it was like not very explicit and some function names uh, were like a bit uh, not awkward, but I would say, yeah, not very explicit. We have to dig in the, into the documentation and have some explanation about the, what the function does uh, and some stuff like that. And uh, of course, no dedicated component. Uh, like uh, you had to override the uh, the canvas of the view, but you didn't have like a dedicated canvas component uh, for like the view system. So now let's see uh, the the introduction there. So as I said, uh, if uh, you wanted like to. Uh, override the canvas of a view. Uh, so back then, uh, with the view system, it was like this. You override the unroll function uh, in order to apply the, the unroll canvas. Uh, and then you will have access to the canvas, and you can draw uh, whatever you want on the, on the canvas. And, uh, on the canvas, you have to remember that uh, the origin of what you what you draw uh, is at the top left corner. Uh, so we have our origin of our x and y axis, and uh, you have to always think like, like um, this way if you want to draw uh, some some lines, some functions. Uh, so uh, think as a as a mathematic thinking of what you draw. So always uh, think about the origin and the x and y axis. Uh, that's very important here. And so uh, <clears throat> what we have to draw uh, on the canvas. So we have a bunch of function. For example, you have draw rect uh, for drawing a rectangle, draw line, draw oval, and draw circle for drawing a a circle. So that's very explicit of uh, what the function does. Uh, you can also have the draw bitmap or draw text. Uh, so um, this is for the like the native Canvas API. Uh, so you can draw directly uh, a bitmap or uh, draw some text, uh, the, the sentence you want to, to display uh, for your user. Um, can also uh, draw some paths. Um, this is for complex shapes. Uh, if you want like, to build a custom path for, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, building a, a movie ticket, uh, it could be very useful to go for, uh, for the draw path method. And you have some, uh, uh, some animations uh, function uh, like with translation of we scale with rotation, which allows us like to animate uh, anything you want you you have drawn before uh, on the canvas. Uh, something which is nice to to have in mind uh, is the blend mode, uh, so you don't have to remember all the things. Uh, you can have a very nice cheat sheet because uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, for the blend mode, but uh, if you are combining uh, uh, like images, uh, especially if you want to build some mask on your uh, on your canvas, um, think about you using some blend modes. Uh, it could be very and um, super useful. And if you want like to have a, a very big overview of the Android canvas, I mean, the in native Android canvas, uh, you can have a look at the very nice article uh, Rebecca France uh, wrote uh, a few a few years ago. Uh, it's uh, it's all the knowledge of when you can learn about the basics of uh, in the Android canvas is in this article. 
So uh, now uh, we have a general overview of the, the native canvas. Let's see how it goes with the Compose canvas. So what about the um, Jetpack Compose canvas? Uh, so um, we have the Draw Scope API uh, that allow us to access the methods that are very uh, close to the native canvas APIs. So the draw scope, draw scope will allow us to access, for example, the draw line, the draw circle, the draw paths, for example. Um, also, there is a dedicated API to animate, animate what you've drawn before. And the most important here is that there is a very nice inter interoperability with the native, native canvas. So uh, this is the, the component, the, the Jetpack Canvas. So uh, as a name, simple as, as it is, uh, Canvas. Uh, set a bunch of modifiers you want here. And then to access the draw scope, uh, you have to like override the Lambda uh, on row. And inside the Lambda, you'll have access to the draw scope. So to understand how, how it works uh, on the code, uh, let's see how we can draw uh, a simple smiley face uh, with the Jetpack Compose Canvas. And this piece will allow us to understand how to use the draw methods of the uh, Jetpack Compose Canvas and the draw scope. And at the end, we'll have a nice smiley face like this, uh, just a smile, uh, which is uh, like a half of a circle, uh, two, uh, two square for the eyes, and uh, a circle for the head. So now let's draw, let's draw the head. So inside you, you are your Andrew Lambda. So this will be the draw scope. So you can call directly draw a circle to draw uh, the head, for example. Uh, here we can. Uh, put uh, here. I'm, I'm putting um, a brush, so this is a gradient, like to have a, uh, some uh, nice, nice color on the on the head. But you can also pass uh, a, a simple color here. Uh, uh, it's up to you. And to draw a circle, of course, we'll need a center uh, and a radius. So it's up to you here. You can uh, like whatever it suits your, uh, your logic. And uh, for the, the circle, we can apply a style. Uh, so we can apply a dedicated stroke or uh, some, some dots. Uh, they have, uh, that is some nice API here uh, to, to customize your way. And then uh, we are going to, going to draw the smile. So we are going to to draw an arc. Uh, so here I'm passing just a simple color. Uh, for the arc, you have a start angle and a sweep angle. So here I'm drawing so half of the circle. So I go for uh, 180, uh, 180 degrees. Uh, so yeah, it's in degrees. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll use the, the center of the, uh, of the circle. And in some uh, in some method of the uh, the the Jetpack Compose Canvas, uh, you have to specify the, on the top left uh, of the um, the drawing. So the drawing is located almost always as it is in a um, in a square or in a rectangle, like to define the uh, like the, the shape inside this rectangle. And finally, uh, we'll go for the eyes. So we're going to draw two rectangles with the top left, as I said, and a, a dedicated size. So uh, what it looks like in the real world. Uh, so is my main, my main screen. So I put the smiley face canvas here, uh, which I can access. So this is a dedicated did it get this uh, just as um, a modifier of like to for the size for 200 uh, dp. Uh, 
So we are drawing the circle here for the head, uh, drawing the smile with a dual arc, the rectangles for the eyes. And if I build on my device, Yep. you'll have the smiley face on your uh, on your canvas. So it here even for for drawing like some some smiley face and some basic basic shapes, uh, you see it's very easy to understand how the um, the API works for 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 the Jetpack canvas. Uh, so now back to the slide. Uh, now let's say we can access the native canvas inside uh, the Jetpack Mobile canvas. Because uh, you won't maybe migrate all the stuff you did uh, previously in your application uh, with the canvas uh, using the new Jetpack Compose canvas. Because uh, yes, you can reuse uh, what you built before and integrate it very easily with the Jetpack Compose canvas. Uh, there is a very nice interop with uh, the native canvas. Uh, in fact, you can access directly the native canvas in the in, say, in the in the grow scope. Um, if you don't want like to migrate, as I said. Uh, uh, the, pa the the path of uh, what you uh, what you did before because uh, it can be very complex to uh, to, to draw some very complex path. Uh, you can have a lot of logics there, uh, and there is a very nice uh, method as compose path. You can call on the native path API. Uh, it will map uh, the the native Android path to the compost path. So uh, it's very useful here for migrating from uh, your old view system to Jetpack Compose. So why going for the native canvas, uh, you might say, because uh, maybe you can like fast, easy migration for what you did before. Uh, and another Things is that not all methods uh, from the native canvas are available in the grow scope. So sometimes maybe you'll need to access directly to the jetpack, to the, the native canvas and deal with it. For example, uh, in the grow scope, there is no draw text method. So yes, you'll have to to go for the uh, for the native canvas. So on your draw lambda. Uh, you have access to uh, another another lambda here, which is the draw into canvas. Um, inside this one, uh, you will have access to the native canvas calling it dot native canvas, and here you can like apply and call all the draw methods uh, that is from the the net from native Android. So, uh, for example, here uh, to display text on the Jetpack Compose canvas. Just call uh, the draw text method as you do be, as you did before. Um, like put the text you want to display. Um, it will be displayed on your composable. So yeah, uh, this is the the most important here: uh, the draw draw into canvas lambda and the in the native canvas to access the the Android canvas. So now uh, we add another view of what you can do with the Jetpack Compose Canvas. Let's see how we can animate uh, shapes. So for the shapes, uh, you will have some transformation APIs on the canvas. Uh, so this will be uh, directly uh, used in the draw scope. So the draw scope offer like multiple lambda to animate uh, the drawings, like translate, scale, or rotate. Uh, there is some also some very nice, uh, yeah, this is some very nice API to animate uh, the, the drawings. And of course, 
uh, as always, there is a nice interoperability with the native canvas. So you can draw things with the native canvas and you have, you have the, the Jetpack Compose uh, APIs to animate what you're drawn with the native canvas. And that's very useful for, for, for migrations. So how we can define animations here uh, with Jetpack Compose Canvas. Uh, you can define, for example, some animation states, which is time or infinite, uh, up to you, uh, with the remember infinite transition or uh, animate float as state or animate int as state. Uh, it's up to you what value you, can, uh, you want to pass to, to your animation. And also, you can animate your drawings with, uh, with the scroll and drag changes. So it, we have React with uh, like uh, the scroll event and the drag event. Uh, you'll have the, the position of your scroll, for example, with a uh, remember scroll state, for example. So here is, for example, an infinite animation. So we define an infinite transition here. Um, we want like to infinite animate a scale. Uh, so I need a float here. So I go um, with the animate float and I am putting an, in an initial value, uh, the target I want to to make. So the scale will be, will be uh, like a bit smaller than the original size and the target will be like slightly bigger than the original size and then i define the infinite repeatable uh, spec so it will be uh, repeating for uh, half a second with uh, an easing fast out slow easing and it's a repeat mode reverse so it would be uh, forward and backward uh, for for the scale animation we can also put, put some, uh, some time anima animation, so uh, setting a target value, um, also defining some animation spec. Here it's up to you, uh, very uh, depending of uh, what animation you want to, to create. And then uh, we are back to the canvas, and uh, we'll use the here, for example, the translate method. Uh, to to do some translation uh, of what you've done before, and also you can combine uh, different animations. Uh, so you can like uh, indent all the the transformation you want to make. For example, uh, I want to translate and also scale um, something I draw on the canvas. It's possible like to. Uh, to have some nested uh, um, animating lambdas here. So yeah, uh, we know how to you can nest all the the lambdas for animation. And so uh, back in Android Studio. Uh, so here I'll go for the uh, for the uh, for the time wave animation I did for the Jetpack Compose Challenge 2 for it was for the timer. So it was like basically a wave uh, inside like uh, inside the rectangle uh, which goes slightly slightly um, to the end. Uh, so I'll put us like some uh, animated color. So I define all my animation here at the beginning of the composable. Um, so when all my animations are set, I can go with the canvas uh, where I'm translating uh, my wave, uh, my wave drawing. And then I will display the, the time uh, on, the, on the canvas as well so i will need like to translate according to the time uh, the timer and also i put like a little scale animation uh, when the the value uh, comes to the end so here i'm accessing the the native canvas with the drawing to canvas lambda and uh, the the time will be displayed uh, thanks to the native canvas on my composable 
So I won't go into uh, much details here, although the logic uh, of the path is uh, a bit complex. Um, that's not very mandatory and useful here. So I am building the applications, and we should be ready in a few seconds. So as it is, you can see the wave animation here with the text here with, an, uh, with the native Android canvas, but display inside a composable. So you can see the nice interoperability here. And if I start um, the animation, so you can see the translate animation and the translate and scale now animation uh, till the end. So uh, it's pretty straightforward to, to use and animate uh, stuff on your uh, on the Jetpack Compose canvas. Uh, now back to the code again, uh, to the code, to the slide, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so now we see like a bit of an overview of uh, what you can do with the Jetpack Compose Canvas. So how uh, you can draw things, how you can animate things. Um, and now let's see how we can use this knowledge to apply it on regular composables, uh, like text or image and something like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you how you can build this custom shape for composables. So you can customize composable uh, by passing a custom shape uh, and it supports elevation. So you can pass the, the elevation you want. And even if the shape is complex, the, 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 um, the elevation and the shadow uh, will be rendered like uh, very, very nicely with the uh, with the shape, so that's a great advantage. Yeah, uh, you don't have to do some very much customization of the elevation and the shadow. Uh, just go for your custom shapes, and you will be good to go. Uh, we'll see how you can use the um, the Pass API uh, to build uh, your your custom shape. And to, to do that and apply that on your composable, um, will you the, uh, the modifier row behind? Uh, this modifier is there to access actually the like the canvas, the draw scope of your of your composable. So yeah, uh, this will be the the way of accessing our draw scope draw scope of uh, of a composable. And we'll use actually yes the draw behind um, modifier. So how we, does it look like uh, on a text, for example? You know, you define your text, your style, you all the modifier you want. And for example, uh, in the border modifier, you can pass uh, a shape. So you can have a custom shape for your border. And also, uh, if you want to apply a custom background, you can pass a color, and also you can pass a custom shape. So let's see how it looks like with that uh, that kind of uh, of shapes. Uh, so let's see how we can build like this ticket, for example. Uh, we are using uh, like. Uh, two two shapes, uh, one for the outline and one for the like the the dotted inside uh, the ticket. So we're gonna draw all the borders uh, with the draw scope. So uh, let's see how we can like build this movie ticket uh, with uh, Jetpack Compose. So we're gonna use uh, a basic just a basic box. Uh, we'll define uh, on the graphic layer uh, the elevation for 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 a nice shadow, and mostly the shape. Uh, we are going to build here our custom shape. And don't forget, like to specify you want to clip to that shape with the with clip equal to. Then uh, I want to apply a color, so I want like my dark color apply to to the movie ticket. 
And uh, on the draw behind, uh, thanks to draw behind, I will draw a pass, uh, a dedicated pass uh, to uh, like the, the, the red border uh, you can see inside the ticket. So the default shape structure, uh, so you implement the, the, the shape, uh, simple as it is from uh, the, the UI foundation of Jetpack Compose, and you'll need to override create outline here. So create outline with return uh, an outline. You can put here, for example, generic outline uh, for, and uh, you'll need to pass the, the to pass the path uh, you want to to draw on your uh, on your uh, for your shape. Uh, so here I'm going to explain how you can like draw the ticket path with a dedicated size and uh, have like some uh, dedicated corner radius, for example. So at the beginning, at the end, and at the end, uh, we want to have this shape, and we'll define for a rectangle to have the, the corner, the rounded corner uh, inside this uh, rectangle. So to be, not to have like an external rounded corner, but like more on a internal uh, kind of a rounded corner. So there's all the paths for these shapes. And first we start with the corners. Um, to to build these corners, um, so I'll start with the uh, with the top left arc, and then on the path API, I'll start with the uh, with the first arc with arc two, and I'll define the rectangle where I want to draw uh, this arc, and then I need to define uh, depending uh, on where I am on the path the start uh, the start angle and the sweep angle. And then I do all the, then I go for uh, the, the line, the top line. So I'll, de I'll define here the line with the line two method. So just need to pass the X and Y position, uh, uh, which is the, like the, the beginning of the line. Uh, you want to go, and then I repeat all the stuff here. Uh, so I'll start with uh, the first, uh, the first arc. Then I draw uh, on on the, the the top line. Then I go for the uh, the top right arc, and then I'll go uh, I'll go clockwise till I close the pass. And I'll show you in details after on the code. So here, I am. here it is. Uh, so now uh, let's draw the red border. Uh, with that, I will access the draw scope with the draw behind uh, method. Uh, we'll use the same function uh, actually to generate the path um, to display in a, like an inner uh, an inner border. Uh, we'll use the scale transformation. So uh, to to do that uh, on the draw B at lambda, uh, you just need like to call the scale method with like uh, uh, a scale of uh, zero dot nine, for example, and then draw the path with the the ticket path you, know, you want to draw, and just apply the color you want to and the style you want to display, and then you will have your uh, your nice uh, nice movie ticket and uh, you can put anything you want in there uh, any images or text like hello Maria uh, and some other fancy stuff and you can go even further uh, and animate shapes uh, and you'll see in in a couple of seconds how you can like animate the outline of, uh, of a composable. So let's see how we can do it and uh, show it on Android Studio. So I go here with my main screen. Uh, so 
do 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 I don't need any more my time wave animation. Don't need any more my. Uh, let's see our first our movie ticket. So it was my ticket. Uh, ticket composable first. So I'm defining here, yeah, as you can see, just a text with the um, hello Montreal uh, free ticket. I'm defining the style of the text. And then I have a bunch of modifier here. So I, and, uh, the, the order of the modifiers matters here. Uh, if you call the draw behind before, for example, the the graphics layer, uh, you won't have the same result uh, at all. So make sure, uh, think of layer uh, like a layer cake. Do do you layer layer by layer? Uh, so uh, I want my my uh, my shape first, and then I put the painter <laughs> the paint to to apply uh, so it will be my my um my uh, my background and then if i draw something on top uh again uh, draw the draw behind method so uh you know I'll define the shape of my composable and then uh, i'll do the the scale for the inner border and then i want to apply some some padding here so uh if i build this uh this thing on belong tech 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 turning it up yes and here you are uh you have your uh, your hello montreal ticket uh so with like uh, 20, 20, 30 line of code. Uh, you have like some nice shapes and nice UI uh, for for building your app. Um, yeah, here I, I put like a, a pass dash effect on the on the style to to add the, the little dot in the inner 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 padding. And if I go uh to the nice animation stuff you can also animate your shapes so here i have a ticket wave composable so the same shape as you saw uh uh it's a ticket wave uh, not exactly this one so it, it is like the the wave animation you saw on that ticket if i remember and also a poly, uh, polygon image composable so if we dig into details here uh i defining my animation here uh so I'm defining the number of uh, of vertex i want to display for for the for the shape and then here I define on the graphics layer the shape of the composable. So the composable here is an image. And I define my poly shape. And my poly shape here extends the, the shape uh, which comes from the, the UI foundation of uh, Jetpack Compose. And remember that any shape, uh, every shape are immutable. So uh, you cannot pass something on the lambda of uh, of the generation of the um, outline. Uh, always consider passing arguments here on the constructor uh, for for animation. So you can pass the uh, the radius and the and the size. Uh, for example, is for for the shapes. Um, uh, for generating the outline, uh, need to pass a new a new pass and the pass will create a new polygon uh, depending on the sides and for the draw ticket uh, so it's a bit more complex here uh, every time first you you reset your your pass to be at the at the top position uh, then you have your your first top left arc, the line, then the top right arc, and then the 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 right 
um, the right line and then the bottom right arc and then again again and again till we close the pass and uh, be sure to close always your pass uh, like to have a complete a complete path on your uh, on your screen and uh, I think we are almost good on the polygon shape, and that's what I explained. And uh, yeah, I was talking about immutability for, for shapes. For example, here, if I compile the sample, uh, so this is with the, the wave animation. Uh, so I go, I go again and build the application. Yes, so on the screen here, you have your uh, the, the ticket with the wave animation, so the, in, the new image. Uh, so you have the wave, uh, it used to be on the over composable and the, here the, the polygon, on, depending of the number of, uh, of vertex. Uh, of edges, I mean. Um, so it's working very well. But here, uh, for the wave animation, if I, as I use the generic line and pass the, um, the animated uh, state to uh, the lambda, which create the pass, if I don't do this thing here, just passing the, the DX animation, you'll see that if I compile again, Yep. yep. Uh, so uh, as you can see, there is no more uh, animation here because um, here I put the animation each, each time on the, the lambda which create the path for the generic shape. Um, it's uh, immutable, so it only create once uh, once the pass for the shape and that's it. Here the the trick for for enabling the animation uh, it's like to have a, a temporary uh, variable here to to display the the animation uh, because here if we if we do it that way uh, each time the animation triggers a new value it will recreate uh, a new shape. So the graphics layer will be like call, call back again every time a new, a new DX value is sent. And uh, I think we are almost good. And if you want to learn, uh, like I summarize all the things here about the Jetpack Compos Canvas, I wrote a nice article here. Uh, but what what you should uh, learn, uh, what you should know, and um, if you want, like to to focus on shapes and how you can build shapes and animate them, uh, I also wrote a, a nice article about that. Uh, so feel free to to go and take whatever you want. Uh, I think I update uh, uh, the sample code is not on the on the latest. Um, uh, jetpack beta. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'd be very happy to answer. <laughs>